Hi everyone, it's Margaret Manning here and welcome to 60 and Me. Hope you had a wonderful sleep last night and you're ready to face the day today with lots of energy and enthusiasm and you know just to make the best of this time we have on this planet. I, I just am so grateful every single day for you, uh, for the community, uh, for my family, my friends, for, for people that really are important to me, people that energize me and that give me support and um, you know I hope that you've got those people in your life as well. Super important but most of all right now I want to say thank you to you. <laughs> Thank you for being here. I mean that sincerely. But um, anyway, I want to share first of all, before we get started with our topic today, uh, my tea. Now, <laughs> I don't know about you, but um, I have some associations with tea that go way, way back. I've, I've mentioned already in England, it's like the thing you eat or you drink immediately after your, your milk <laughs> when you're a baby. But um, when I was um, in, in college, I went to school in Boulder. I don't know if I ever told you all that. I went to school in Boulder, Colorado, University of Colorado. And um, it was in the seven, early 70s. And it was um, when there was a company called Celestial Seasonings just down the road from where I lived and they I believe were founded in Boulder and they did the best teas ever and uh, when I was traveling this summer in um, in Norway I came across a company that had da da celestial seasoning tea and I oh my gosh they had every single um, flavor and there are many of them now but um, they're very well known for their sleepy time tea which is a, um, a chamomile tea and also I picked up this one which is a honey vanilla um, and it says um, well it's just it's got honey in it and, and vanilla, caffeine free, and they're just really, really good teas. And of course, I, I filled up my suitcase with more tea than I did anything else this time. <laughs> but it was really lovely to have my Celestial Seasonings tea. So there it is. I'm having uh, the Celestial Seasonings Honey Vanilla Chamomile. And uh, I've got sleepy time as well, which I have had in the evenings. And I'll share some more of them with you as we go along because I brought back quite a few. But do you have any memories of teas as, as a child, as a teenager in college that you really loved? Celestial seasonings I, are still around, obviously, and they're doing very well. But um, I can't seem to find them anywhere that I you know local to me. So I've got a I've got a stash. <laughs> Anyway, I do hope that you have a cup of tea or coffee nearby, nearby and um, that you're just relaxing for a bit. Just breathe and we'll take a moment to talk about something that I kind of started to, to, to chat about earlier and that is having friends and having girlfriends particularly as you get a little older. Now, uh, you know, we, we, many of, of you have partners and husbands and, and relationships and, you know, those have a certain context to them and you, obviously you love and adore the people that you live with, hopefully. But um, there's something about a relationship with a girlfriend that lasts. It lasts long, it goes deep, and it's the kind of relationship that cannot be, you know, duplicated. And as you get older and maybe find yourself alone, maybe you got divorced or, or you know, your husband has died, that you really feel a need need to connect with with other women why because we understand each other you know we go we go like our experience and our our uh, life um, you know sort of challenges are aligned and we, and we do get it we really do ha don't have to use quite the same complexity of language we just understand we can help each other solve problems you know manage uh, stress deal with challenges talk about family, uh, things that are, you know, that we have a common um, experience of, or if not a common direct experience, just an empathy. So I think this is important. Now, one of our bloggers, Rebecca Olkowski, wrote an article about seven reasons that having a girlfriend network is important as we age. Now, we've read articles about this. I've actually interviewed um, Suzanne Braun Levine a few years ago now, but uh, she'd written a book about uh, girlfriends, how important they are. But this is just some, some tips, so seven reasons that Rebecca thinks we need a girlfriend network in our lives. You know, lots of emotional crises, lots of transitions as we get older. Things are changing and girls can help us <laughs> if we reach out. So it's you know, really highlighting the importance of having a social network that is, um, you know, that's your people, your tribe. So seven reasons. First of all, obviously to share feelings. You know, women I would say, I mean, I don't mean to generalize here, but women are more open, I think, to sharing feelings and opening up and being prepared to listen and offer suggestions. So, you know, I think women just have an intu intuition about what might help. 
you know, someone's feeling a bit low, well then just take something over, take a meal over, take a, you know, some fresh fruit or a little treat, some chocolate, <laughs> just something that you, well, it would either would work for you or that you know that person loves and just would cheer them up. So I think, you know, spending time together, go to the spa, go shopping, just little things that you don't have to spend a ton of money, you just, um, just take the time to be side by side, to be together. So sharing feelings. Next thing is working together. And this is working together on projects that you feel a common bond about. I mean, perhaps you're both involved in a charity or some kind of work that you really feel have a, have a passion for. You know, work, working together with other women can be really, really supportive. I know lots of women, um, you know, start new hobbies and find a girlfriend who's from that class, that knitting class or that embroidery or you know, pottery, some class you've picked up. And then suddenly you're really good friends because you're working together on a project or on something you love together. Um, there's one uh, actually in Rebecca's case, she says they have a, a network of girlfriends who meet in a coffee house and every month they bring, I think it's some contribution, small few dollars. They all put that together when they're having their coffee and then they choose a charity or some cause that they all feel strongly about and that's kind of the conversation in the coffee shop which is great because there's nothing better than giving, <laughs> giving to someone else and it helps you to feel you know, like you're making a difference. So that's another thing, work together. Have fun together. <laughs> you know, if you go by yourself, and this is the one thing I have about solo travel that um, doesn't always work for me, is that sometimes, you know, I'll be um, somewhere, like even on the cruise or somewhere, and, you're, and there's dancing, and I'm not quite bold enough to get up there and do it by myself. But honestly, if you're with a girlfriend, you can do amazing things together. There's no, there's no fear. <laughs> You just feel like you can support one another and you know, so you don't even have to go dancing. You can go to a movie together, you can go to a, a chick flick, you know, something that maybe uh, guys wouldn't want to see. You know, just some fun movie together that, um, where did we go once? It was so funny. Oh, it was Frozen. <laughs> <laughs> and we were all saying, let it be, let it go, let it go. And, you know, just being silly in the audience. But it was it was all part of a very fun day with, with girlfriends. And see the world and the things you have fun doing through a female perspective. It's different. It's just, it's just fun. So have fun together. Another thing is to give feedback to one another. Now, women in a network, um, especially if you've got a common interest, you know, like you're, you're starting a business or um, you know, you've got some common passion, giving feedback is, is um, hard for some people. But with, with your girlfriends, you somehow feel it's okay. You don't want to hurt anyone's feelings or make them feel insecure or <laughs> like, oh, that's a stupid idea. But it's like having a conversation and saying, yeah, that's a great idea. And, and then you go on with the next thing. Not, not the opposite, which is, yeah, that's a great idea, but you'll never, and then using but instead of and. So I think that's a good, a good thing that we can do as girlfriends, is just build on each other's ideas and be more honest with one another. You know, just don't, I mean, not, not that men aren't honest. I'm not saying that other, you know, that men aren't free, are able to talk freely and, and give you good, great feedback. I'm sure that lots and lots of you do get that from your partners. But women have a special kind of network their special kind of uh, vibration <laughs> just the, and in some cases it's just talking it through I don't know if you find this but guys sometimes tend to be problem solvers you tell them a problem and it's like right this is what we're gonna do but with women it's like mm, let's talk it through over a coffee over a tea just one of those uh, characteristics I think another thing is to share caregiving now, there are many women in our community who are caregivers to an older parent or you know, to an elderly parent or someone who's uh, dealing with an illness. Could be a child, it could be a friend. Uh, but you know, if you've got a responsibility to be somewhere uh, every day or you know, just, just be present, it's sometimes nice just to get a girlfriend to help you. Just say, hey, could you come sit for half an hour just so I can go to, sh to the shops or just want to go to the spa for a few hours if you can just come in and um, make sure that mom's okay and just give some food or just take care, just be present. So caregiving, I think, is really important. And, you know, we've got several bloggers who write about caregiver burnout, and that's a super big problem for lots of us, uh, lots of people, not, not my situation, of course, but um, is a way to share caregiving. And women are great, great at doing that. We like to give. It helps. It helps us too. Another thing that Rebecca mentions is emotional support. 
Now this is you know different than just going through a decision or um, you know just wanting to talk through a, pro a business problem. This is where you've got maybe an illness, you've got some, you're not feeling so good, and you just want someone just to to help you. Just hold your hand, just be there and hold your head, hold your, tell you to, it's okay, it's going to be all right, and mean it. Not to be kind of, you know, Pollyanna-ish about it, if there's a reality, a diagnosis of an illness that's quite serious, uh, then, you know, it's more than just um, just holding hands, it's it's really being being there, helping with doctor's appointments, you know, picking up prescriptions if, if, if your friend's just not feeling strong enough. You know, just having a bit of a cry together if you're feeling a bit scared or tell jokes, you know, just, just cheer each other up. Moral support, emotional support, it's a really um, important reason to cultivate a, a girlfriend network in, in your 60s, or really any age for that matter, but particularly in your 60s. Body changes. They get it. <laughs> they understand the magic of chin hairs and how that works and how your wrinkles just show up and how these you know, parts of your body go through hormone changes. Yeah, your husband or your partner is always willing to you know, give you a little help and, and support you, but women truly get it. They understand and they can relate to hot flashes and gray hair and wrinkles and all these changes that we go through physically. So I think it's really important to have um, girlfriends in that respect. I hope you agree. Because you know, as I just keep going on this list, uh, just to say that this is why we have 60 and Me. Some people find themselves by themselves. They don't have anyone uh, to, to hang out with. They don't have a tribe, a network of girlfriends. And so, you know, when I started 60 and Me, this was kind of part of the plan that we would create a place that was, uh, that was safe and, and um, easy to get to, that covered all the things that were on the minds of women and give them a network of girlfriends that they could talk to and, um, and lean on and share all those things that we've talked about, sharing emotions, problems, challenges, and uh, to be a strength to each other. So I guess I'd like to ask you a question. You know, do you have a tribe of women that you can reach out to, to talk to and get support? Do you have a network of girlfriends? Be really interested to know where you go for that emotional support with other women and uh, leave your comments in the section below. And uh, I really do look forward to this conversation and help each other out. You know, if you see someone that's maybe not got a friend or feels a little bit alone, just give them a hug, give them a virtual hug. And let us know, do you have a, a network of girlfriends? Okay, thanks so much for being here. Thanks for participating in the conversation and um, tell a friend about 60 and Me. Um, thank you for showing up every day. And I really do look forward to seeing you all again really, really soon. Bye-bye for now.